This video was brought to you by Brilliant. On Monday, Israel announced that it would be drawing down its troop presence in Gaza. But while the war in Gaza might be cooling off a bit, it's still unclear how or when it's actually going to end. At, at the same time, tensions are actually escalating in the wider Middle East. The US is actively attacking Houthi ships in the Red Sea, Israel is talking about the possibility of invading Lebanon, and pro-Iranian groups in both Iraq and Syria are stepping up their attacks against both Israel and the US. So in this video, we're going to take a look at what's going on in the Red Sea, the escalating tensions in the Middle East, and what might happen next. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. So as we see it, the Gaza conflict is spilling out into the wider Middle East in four places, Yemen, Lebanon, Syria and Iraq. Let's start with Yemen, where the Iran-backed Houthis, who control most of the northwest, have been attacking both commercial and military ships in the Red Sea. As we've detailed in previous videos, the Red Sea is a super important international trade route for essentially two reasons. Firstly, most oil and liquefied natural gas from Arab countries going to Europe goes out of the Persian Gulf around the Arabian Peninsula through the Red Sea into Europe. Secondly, most goods going from China and other East Asian countries to Europe also go through the Red Sea. Europe imports a whole lot of oil and buys tons of stuff from China, which is why something like 30% of global container traffic goes through the Red Sea. A few weeks ago, the Houthis started attacking commercial ships transiting through the Red Sea and Bab al-Mandeb Strait, which connects the Red Sea to the Arabian Sea. Then in December, after four of the big shipping companies said that they'd no longer sail through the Red Sea, the US announced an international maritime coalition to protect ships transiting through the region, in an attempt to convince commercial tankers to continue using the strait and bring down global shipping costs. Unfortunately for the West though, and especially for Europe, this hasn't really worked. On December 31st, American helicopters attacked Houthis trying to board a shipping tanker, prompting Iran to dispatch its own warship to the region. There's now even talk of airstrikes against the Houthis in Yemen, and the risk of a direct conflict with Iran is now way higher than it once was. The next area in question is Lebanon. And that's because since October 7th, Israel has been trading missile strikes with Hezbollah, a militant group created by a handful of pro-Iranian Shia clerics during the Israeli occupation of southern Lebanon in the 80s. Hezbollah have since established themselves as a player in mainstream Lebanese politics, and still essentially control most of southern Lebanon. Anyway, despite firing off a couple of missiles in solidarity with Hamas back in October, Hezbollah have made it clear that they don't want a full-on war with Israel. In his speeches, Hezbollah's leader has consciously avoided declaring war on Israel, and stressed that Hezbollah didn't know anything about the October 7th attacks. Nonetheless, tensions between Israel and Hezbollah have been rapidly escalating recently, and Israel has apparently decided that Hezbollah's position on Israel's northern border is untenable. Last month, Israel's national security advisor said that Israel could no longer accept Hezbollah's presence near northern Israel, and that, unless Hezbollah agrees to change the situation diplomatically, which looks unlikely if not impossible, then Israel will have to act. More recently, Benny Gantz, a member of the war cabinet and probably the most popular politician in Israel, warned that if the Lebanese government didn't restrain Hezbollah, the IDF would do it warning that the next stage of fighting with Hezbollah will be deep, forceful, and surprising. Even if you don't think it's justified or good for regional stability, the fact that Israel is preparing for conflict with Hezbollah shouldn't be all that surprising. Tens of thousands of Israelis have been evacuated from northern regions, and Israel is obviously concerned about Hezbollah trying out an October 7th style attack in the north. This anxiety is only exacerbated by the fact that Hezbollah is many times more powerful than Hamas. Thanks to Iranian support, Hezbollah has an enormous rocket arsenal and tens of thousands of troops, making it arguably the most powerful non-state military in the world. Anyway, let's move on to the next place on the list, Syria. 
For context, Iran has long supported Bashar al-Assad's government and pro-Assad militias fighting in Syria's civil war, who are staunchly anti-Israel. And with this Iranian and Russian support, Assad has been able to weather the Syrian civil war and now controls about 60% of Syria. Israel has been trading missile strikes with pro-Iranian groups in Syria since October 7th, but tensions have ratcheted up recently. On Christmas, Israel assassinated one of Iran's top commanders in Syria with an airstrike outside of Damascus. And a few days ago, Israel launched another load of airstrikes against pro-Iranian positions south of Aleppo. Finally, the fourth place on the list is Iraq. For context, after the US mostly withdrew from Iraq in 2007, Iran capitalized on the political dysfunction and widespread anti-American sentiment to expand its influence in the country. Today, more than a dozen political parties and a number of paramilitary groups in Iraq have ties with Iran, and a report published by the US Army in 2018 admitted that an emboldened and expansionist Iran appears to be the only victor of the Iraq war. While Israel has so far refrained from firing directly against Iraqi targets, pro-Iranian groups in the country have been attacking the few thousand US troops that are still in the country, nominally to fight ISIS. This has prompted retaliatory strikes from the US, with the latest and largest coming roughly a week ago. You get the idea then, tensions are rising across the Middle East. So what happens next? Are we at risk of a World War III? Well, as we see it, whether or not the war spills out into a wider regional conflict broadly depends on two things. Firstly, whether or not the US and its allies can convince Israel to de-escalate. The US has begun publicly calling for Israel to wind down its operation in Gaza, but Netanyahu has basically ignored its largest ally. And this suggests that the US will struggle to, say, convince Israel not to escalate against Hezbollah. The second factor, though, is Iran. So far, Iran has been more restrained than many analysts expected, stressing that it didn't have any direct involvement in the October 7th attacks and refraining from direct attacks against Israel or its allies. However, as tensions between its proxies and the West escalate, the odds of direct Iranian involvement are clearly going up. All in all, while a wider Middle East war still seems unlikely, given the relatively tepid response from both Iran and Israel's Arab neighbors, the fact that regional tensions are still rising many months into the Gaza war doesn't bode well for regional stability. As we step into 2024, many of us are contemplating our New Year's resolutions, always looking to improve ourselves and learn more about the world around us. And while our content is always a good starting point, a lot of the stuff we talk about can seem pretty complicated, especially when we dive into analytics and detailed data. But luckily, there's a fun and easy way to learn more, which doesn't cost thousands of dollars or take years and years of schooling. That's because Brilliant is the best way to learn maths, data science, and computer science interactively. And the good thing is that it doesn't take long to learn either. These complex topics are broken down into small but accessible chunks, designed around your busy schedule. Even just a few minutes a day can help you with accumulating new knowledge over time in a fun and engaging way. As time goes on, you'll get used to that empowering feeling of learning too, because Brilliant isn't just about memorization and lectures. Brilliant teaches you by doing, using active learning techniques to teach you the principles behind otherwise complex topics and ensuring that you actually understand what's going on. So whether you want to brush up on your basic math skills, improve your employment prospects, or just have another New Year's resolution for 2024, you can check out that everything that Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days by going to brilliant.org forward slash TLDR. Plus, the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Thanks for your support, and thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video.